Hey everyone, welcome back to the Jump Cut Play YouTube channel. Sam back again here, and we're talking again about Battlefield 2042. Today is the release day, and before we get our official review on the site, I just wanted to jump in with kind of a review in progress, so to speak, about the game. I've had the chance to play it for the last week or so, and so have a few other members of the play team, and I just wanted to jump in with some quick thoughts on the game. Now, if you're not aware of it battlefield 2042 is the latest entry in the franchise and it's jumping back to the modern day setting that you've seen in battlefield 3 and battlefield 4 and bad company 2 just a few entries to list off there and it's going into a near futuristic experience not quite what you've seen with like Call of Duty with jetpacks and stuff like that it's still grounded in somewhat of a tangible reality and the thing with this the overall impression so far that you're going to get with this is scale scope this is a gargantuan game when you're playing it the maps are absolutely huge and that that can be a detriment at times and we'll get into that but the the thing to take away about 2042 is scale it has 128 players across ps5 xbox series consoles and pc and i think they've halved it to around 64 on, on ps4 and xbox respectively it's big and you're going to get this overwhelming sense when you're playing the game I'm in the chopper, who's in this chopper? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> There's three kind of sections to the game. You've got the all out warfare section, which is conquest and breakthrough. Then you've got the portal mode as well, which is like a creative sandbox, which has got some amazing potential and we'll get into that. And you've got hazard zone as well, which is, it's not quite a battle royale, but, but it is and isn't, it's, it's an odd one to describe. We'll start with the All Out Warfare section, which is Breakthrough and Conquest. Conquest is where I've spent most of my time on Battlefield 2042 so far. And it's two opposing teams fighting for control on one big map. The maps themselves, initially when I was playing the beta, it wasn't such an issue because you were just confined to the orbital map, which is like a big rocket silo in the middle. And then you've got loads of like, different like, oil rigs and stuff around it. Big map. <laughs> It wasn't much of a problem there, but when you're playing some of the other maps, it just becomes so apparent in like a double-edged sword way. It's, it's scale that's overwhelming in like a very cinematic sense, but then it, on a gameplay level, you're going to find yourself running a lot, and there's two ways you can look at it. Like you can get immersed into the experience, and you're running around, you're looking for objectives, you're commanding other people on your team to go and sort stuff out, and you're helping them take over the objectives, or it's running around a lot and that can be quite boring if, if you look at it that way. Thankfully there are things to counter this. You can spawn vehicles now into your location, you can get hovercrafts, you can get jeeps, but at the same time it still has the classic battlefield issue of waiting for planes and helicopters and stuff to come back because they're unlimited obviously not to overwhelm the map. That doesn't stop you getting shredded <laughs> when you're walking around everywhere. So the map scale can be a detriment at times. However, when you dig into them and you spend a bit more time with these maps, they are absolutely amazing. And, and specifically, the maps Hourglass and Kaleidoscope, which Hourglass is just, when you see a sandstorm coming towards you on that and you're in, you can use a wingsuit, Jesus. It's, <laughs> it, it's just gorgeous, to say the least, on a visuals perspective, but the cinematic kind of consequences of diving into that and evaluating the battle it's 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 incredible and i was enjoying those kind of moment to moment beats of the gameplay and kaleidoscope as well it's like a, a big cityscape map lots of zip lining around which reminded me of hardline that is a great map to kind of coordinate with your squad and like i was playing with some of the people on the jump cut team and we were like coordinate how are we going to get up this skyscraper how are we going to take out the dudes and get to the top it, it's that classic kind of battlefield sense of cooperative gameplay that I was kind of worried wouldn't return in the game because the approach to Battlefield 2042 here is they're going, they're taking a few different elements from different shooters. You've got the kind of hero shooter element with the specialist characters, which is going to divide a lot of players because you don't have your traditional kind of classes now. It's more that you have a specialist who may have like one or two different like unique abilities, like like a wingsuit or a grappling hook, or you've almost got like these like you like a UAV thing that you can unlock that scans people in the area. That might divide people if you just prefer setting up a class, having a regimented thing and going into battle and, and using the pure skill to kind of win that way. That will divide people. Here, when you're using a wingsuit and you're going around the map and you feel like a, 
fucking action hero. <laughs> You're having an excellent time. <laughs> Leveling up, though, outside of playing Conquest, it can be grueling. It's... It's the kind of leveling up that Aaron mentioned in his review over on the BBC. I agree with him. It's it's, it's not a necessarily like in other shooters where you're leveling up consistently and you feel like you're unlocking things all the time. This is a game that you really got to chip away at and put your time into. You really are grinding away to get your different attachments and weapons. But at the same time, when you unlock really good weapons, because there is a fair few great weapons to pick up in this game, it feels rewarding, but it is a bit of a grind. Breakthrough mode, I've not had much time in this, but what I will say is that it's a lot more fast paced than Conquest. Um, I believe Breakthrough was in, it might have been Battlefield 1 or Battlefield 5. Um, much more fast paced, again, it's on the same maps, but the kind of regions that you're playing in are confined a bit more, so you are finding yourself less running, more shooting, which is probably what you want. Portal mode is, like I said in um, one of the other videos where we talked about it, it's like a, a Fortnite creative type mode, except you can make your own game modes with different assets from Battlefield like 1942, Battlefield 3, Bad Company 2, and I'm sure there's one or two others that are missing as well. You can combine different elements, assets, weapons, pretty much anything to make your own game mode. At the minute, the game modes range that people have created, they, they range between like kind of classic modes that are like really realistic. Or XP farming, <laughs> if you want to get more, you know, like your guns up and stuff like that. Ow. But I feel like this mode, as they add more stuff into it, as the game goes along and they introduce stuff from the roadmap, this mode could become something really special, because I think creative modes like this really lend themselves to helping players realise their imagination and have fun with the boundaries of the game and breaking those boundaries. And I think if they... If they just harness in the content that they bring into it, because I'm I'm really hoping they don't just stick to these Battlefield games. I'm hoping they start pulling from other ones as well, like like Battlefield Hardline. I'm hoping they start bringing in these other elements, because just uh, imagine the things you could get to. Cops and robbers chases across the desert. Come on, it, it, it's fun. Hazard Zone is a mode I've only played a couple of games in. I'm not sure how to feel about it. Essentially, you've got like eight squads, four players a squad. And it's got like a Counter-Strike type buy system at the beginning. You buy your weapons and, and attachments and whatnot. And then you drop into a map and everybody's got to locate um, these like data caches. And everybody's after them, but you don't know where the other squads are. It's got that kind of battle royale feeling where you are watching your back consistently. You're scoping out the environment and you're looking to win. Well, once you've got them, you can exfil out and then you get credits for having either been successful or just participating in the game and getting kills and whatnot. And then next time you play, you can use those credits to get your attachments and weapons again. So it's a revolving cycle. Not sure how to feel about it at the minute. It, it could get a lot better, but at the minute it feels like the concept. It's a little half-baked, but again, I've only played a couple of games, so maybe I just need to grind down a bit more there. Presentation-wise, I've been playing Battlefield 2042 on the PlayStation 5, and apart from a few frame rate dips here and there, it's been pretty stable, and it does look immense when it is using the evolution mechanics. The main concept there that they're going for, again, is immersion and scale, and I do think it helps bring you into the battlefield, because when you are really concentrated on this game, you can have so much fun, because there's going to be times where you're playing 2042, like any other battlefield game, and you just feel like you're running around for a while, and then you get shot, and continue that loop. But once you start to get the hang of it, you start to play the objective, start to coordinate, you're going to have a blast with this game. <laughs> I do wish that modes like Conquest would rotate the maps a bit more on a consistent basis because it does feel like a lot of the time, at least in my experience, I'm playing the same two or three maps and I believe, I believe there's eight or so maps at launch. I'd like to see a bit more rotation between them instead of playing just Hourglass or just Orbital on like consistent 20 minute cycles. That can probably get tweaked as well, but it does feel like I'm just playing the same couple of maps at the minute. Curious to see how they go forward with them as well and whether the later maps as more content comes out, whether they'll scale it down just a bit and that will therefore grow the intensity as well. If you've got 128 players roaming in a smaller environment, chaos ensues. 
Gunplay feels a lot better this time. You've got some actual heft and punch with the weapons. I was worried that sniping might not feel as satisfying, but thankfully it returns in 2042 with a snappy satisfaction when you land those delicious headshots across the map. However, like I said, leveling up them can be a grind, but when you do unlock those attachments, and speaking of attachments, the plus system, which I've not mentioned yet and I don't know how, is excellent. It's taking a few nods from other games, but this plus system, how it works is you can switch your attachments on the fly, different ammo types, different size, different grips, and tweak your weapon to the situation as you are within the scale of the battle. So if you're at a long range engagement, sure, no problem. Put on a scope with a bigger magnification, take out the villain over there. In a close range battle, sure, no problem. Change out the grip, change out your magazine for maybe bullets that work better at closer range. Boom, done. As I say, it's going to take you a while to unlock some of those things, so it's, it's kind of counteracting the productivity there. But when you do, it's so good. There's been a few issues with the, kind of the stability of the servers as well. I'm, I, I kind of get the feeling that with like the early access to the game, it's almost like a test period in a way, just so they can even out the kinks on launch day. There has been a patch that went live, I believe, yesterday or today. Um, that might have tweaked some of those things out. I, I did have a few problems on breakthrough mode where it just wouldn't load the, the game mode at all. It just put you in the deploy screen, but you couldn't deploy into the map. I've had some instances where teammates have been downed in an infinite revive status where I just can't revive them at all and they don't even show on the map. And then there's been times where I can't even revive someone anyway, just won't give me the prompt to do it. So there's been a few bugs here and there. Hopefully they can get ironed out, but it hasn't been anything that's been necessarily truly game ruining and put me off 2042 overall as i say this is a review in progress i'm not necessarily going to give it a score right now you can get the official review from jump up play when that goes live but for now i think the future is bright for battlefield thankfully i've been like aaron and many other people on the jumper team looking forward to this for most of the year and i was worried at one point it might not necessarily live up to its lofty ambitions but thankfully, I think they're on the right track, and I think the road ahead for Battlefield 2042 is going to be pretty great, to be honest. So, would I recommend it? I would recommend that you pick it up. If you're a bit apprehensive, you can get a 10 hour trial via EA Play if you've got Game Pass Ultimate as part of that, or you can pay, I think it's $3.99 for a month's worth, or if it's your first time doing it, I think it's. 75p or a pound or something in the uk to get e, um, ea play so try it out for the 10 hours if you want so those have been my quick thoughts on battlefield 2042 this review in progress so to speak if you've played it already and let us know what you think down below in the comments or on twitter at jumpcut underscore play and we'll see you in another video see you next time